I've never shared this story with anyone, not even my parents or my friends. I had just gotten out of a relationship and it wasn't the best breakup I've had. We argued a lot and hardly ever saw each other. Now, I'm not one who usually gets into relationships in the first place. I'm 25 years old and have only had two boyfriends, so I was feeling pretty down when my six-month relationship had ended. My friend suggests that I get on plentyoffish.com. I hadn't heard great things about that site. I always thought it was just a hookup site and other people have told me that's what it was, so I wasn't exactly jumping at the chance to meet someone on there. However, it had been several weeks since the breakup and I figured a male distraction would be good even if it didn't lead to a genuine relationship. So I created my profile and uploaded the best selfies that I could find. I wasn't much of a picture person, so this included a total of three photos. Several days went past and I got a lot of messages, but most of them were from old men or guys with no profile pictures. The messages were very bland and simple too. Hey sexy, hi, what are you doing? What's up? Half the messages didn't even have the words spelled correctly, which is a major turnoff for me as I just graduated with a master's in English education. I guess that made me a bit picky. However, after about a week, I got a message from some guy named Brian. I clicked on his message and read it. It wasn't overly long. Hey, saw your profile. You're very cute. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind chatting for a bit. Let me know. I clicked on his username and brought up his profile. He was very good looking. So good looking, in fact. I could hardly believe he even messaged me and was on the site. Physically, he was the ideal match. Six foot one, brown hair, green eyes, 28 years old, and he was in school to be an engineer. I didn't see any red flags on his profile either. He seemed pretty legit, so I messaged him back. It was pretty standard. Hey, I like your profile too. I see you have a dog. What kind? I have a black lab. I went back to his profile and continued reading it. It was amazing how much we had in common. We went to the same university, both loved dogs, enjoyed drawing and music, and loved cooking. It was almost unbelievable. Ever the skeptic, I waited for him to message me back. It was almost instantaneous. He responded back, yeah, I have a German shepherd. He stays with my mom right now until I move into my own apartment. What's your number? I hardly ever get on here. I was hesitant, but gave him my number anyway. I wasn't a very adventurous person and decided that I was wasting my 20s away. Besides, giving him my number didn't give him my address or anything, so no harm done. Over the next week, we text back and forth. The conversations were great. No arguing or anything, which was refreshing from the arguments I had had with my ex all the time. The only weird thing was that whenever I called, he was always busy. He was at work or hanging out with friends. He would promise to call back, but then never would. But since he was in school too, I figured he was probably telling the truth. After the week of texting, he finally asked me on a date. I was super excited. I immediately agreed and we set up a date to meet over drinks. He sent me the address of the place where we were supposed to meet and the time. Now, I didn't tell anyone about the date. I'm a very paranoid person and I didn't want anybody too excited about something that probably wasn't going to happen. That way, the disappointment wouldn't be as hard to handle. The night of the date came. I did my hair and makeup, two things I never do on a regular basis. I spent hours picking out the right outfit for the date, going back and forth between a skirt and jeans, sneakers or heels. I settled on skinny jeans, heels, a small jacket, and t-shirt. I got in my car and put the address into my GPS. I texted him that I was leaving, and he sent back a great with a smiley face. I looked down at my GPS and saw how far the drive was. 45 minutes. I was shocked by how far out he wanted to go. We both lived in the same city and near the same university, so I figured the drive would be within 20 minutes of where I live. But I left like an hour early, so I knew he'd get there on time. And so would I. It was raining out, 
and I have a real bad feel, fear of driving in the rain. But I wanted to meet this cute guy badly, so I didn't want to cancel on being prude. The drive started out pretty normal. I stayed on main streets for the first 30 minutes of the drive, but the last 15 minutes got weird. I turned onto a street that wasn't very well lit. As I continued driving, there were less and less buildings and people. Soon, I was the only car on the street. The street was surrounded with trees, but that's it. Now, I had lived in this city for years and never knew this place existed. The further I drove, the more concerned I got. I began to get nervous. My stomach twisted in knots with butterflies. It was getting darker outside. I looked at the clock on my dashboard, 9.30. I stopped my car and texted Brian right away. Hey, I'm about five minutes away, but I don't see anything. He texted me back a few seconds later. Yeah, it's pretty out there, but my friends and I hang out there all the time. He sent a second message. Just hurry up, okay? I didn't like the tone of the last message, but sent back an okay and put my car back into drive. A few more minutes passed and I end up in front of a building. My heart sank at the sight of it. The building itself didn't seem run down, but there were no lights on and no cars in the parking lot. I text Brian, is this the right address? I'm here. I sat in the car for about 10 minutes before I finally got a reply. Yeah. Weird. Brian's never sent me a one-word text. I sent him another. Where are you? My phone vibrates with another message. Inside. I stay in my car. My heart is racing at this point. Something didn't feel right, and if it wasn't so concerned about being approved, I would have left like I should have. But I didn't. Instead, I pulled out the hood on my jacket. It was raining lightly now, but I still didn't want to mess up my hair or makeup. I turned on the flashlight on my phone and put it up to the windows of the building. Something just wasn't right. I was really scared, but didn't want to flake. This is where I knew I messed up. I was scared before, but now I was just downright terrified. The building was dark and no cars were in the parking lot. There wasn't even a sign on the building, but I wasn't much of a drinker and didn't go out a lot, so I was a bit naive. I figured maybe he just wanted to meet here and we'd drive together to the actual place. Now, the intelligent side of me knew that that was just plain idiotic, but the young side of me wanted to know what was going on. I opened the door to the building and it was empty. I flashed the light around and didn't see anything. It was definitely a bar, though it looked abandoned. There were a few stools around the bar area and tables with no chairs. It was definitely abandoned and not in service. I began to back out slowly. All of a sudden, I hear a creak. It wasn't the building settling either. This was a long creak, almost like a footstep. It was coming from behind the door next to the bar. I heard it again. At this point, I was no longer concerned about being young and adventurous. I immediately turned tail and darted back to my car. I kicked off my heels so I could run faster, unconcerned about getting them back. I immediately get in my car, shut the door, and turn the light off my phone. I open the home screen and see a text from Brian come back. I shook my head and fished in my purse for my keys. I find them and start my car. And as soon as I do, the headlights come on. What I saw made my heart skip. There was a man standing in front of me between my car and the building. It definitely was not Brian. He was heavy set, maybe about 250 pounds. He wasn't that tall, maybe about 5'9 or so. He had on a vest and a dirty cap and dirty ripped jeans with just staring at me. I turned my brights on. His facial expression was twisted. Despite them being on and shining directly in his face, he wasn't squinting, nor was he blinking. He just stared. His hands were clenched in fists at his sides. We stayed in this position for about a minute. I didn't make any sudden movements. Instead, I slowly moved my right hand towards my gear shift. Once I had it in my grasp, I put my foot on the brakes big mistake. My brake lights came on and it came to the man that was about to pull out. He charged at me. I mean really charged. He was running full speed at my car like some type of Olympic track runner. I threw my car in reverse and floored it. The man still caught up to my car. He started banging on my driver's side window. 
I whipped my car around, not paying attention to the direction I was going. I just knew I had to get out of there. I fumbled with the gear shift as the man angrily continued to bang on my driver's window. I could hear a bunch of thumping noises as he tried to open my car door. Luckily for me, my door would automatically lock when the car is in any gear but park. I pulled out, my car squealing and fish tailing down the road. I drive for 15 minutes before hitting the main road. Thankfully, I had gone in the right direction. I drove the 45 minutes all the way back home, screaming the entire time. I was in disbelief of what happened. Things like this only happen in movies, not real life. I was so freaked out that I didn't even go to my apartment because I was scared the man had followed me. Instead, I went to my ex's house. We weren't talking at the time, but he could see I was shaken up and let me stay the night. He asked me in the morning what happened and where my shoes were. I lied and told him that I had heard creepy noises in my apartment and was afraid someone was trying to break in. He looked at me like he didn't believe me, but didn't press the issue. He ended up driving back with me to my apartment and expected it to make sure I was alone. Even though I knew the story was a lie, I was glad someone went back with me to my apartment. I never saw the man again. He hadn't followed me to my ex's house or my apartment. I didn't call the cops either. I didn't even send a message to Plenty of Fish. I logged back into my profile and saw that Brian had deleted his. I subsequently did the same. And I haven't tried online dating since.